Hey guys, are we ready to have some fun talking about Dragon Ball Super Chapter 49? For this particular review, please enjoy an animation masterpiece that I made years ago. Thanks, Shueisha. Not! So Chapter 49 is definitely focused much more heavily on the fighting and action aspects as opposed to more story or plot progression, but there is a teensy bit of that strewn in there. But I thought it was interesting that at the beginning of the chapter, Eska kind of reveals that he has been passed the torch from Muri to be the elder Namek. Now this is a very young elder, I should say, for Namek. And it actually brings some sense to the Dragon Balls uh, still functioning because if Mori was still the elder, they should have ceased to function when he died, but they still made a wish after he died, at least it seemed. But since Eska is the elder, uh, Mori, uh, Moro got his last wish. Thanks a lot, Eska. <laughs> but um, at the end of the last chapter, they were trying to figure out where Moro went. Well, it turns out he went to space and now he is absorbing everything from everything. Uh, and Maris and Jocko finally make the decision to leave Planet now so that Moro can't steal their energy. Hey, Goku and Vegeta, maybe you guys should do the same thing too. But it turns out that they just want to go attack um, Moro along with the Daikaioshin. And Daikaioshin's like, yeah, you guys come too, because Moro's not strong enough as it is. <laughs> I mean, I kind of think that they should have fell back to think of a strategy, but we will come to their strategy, Goku and Vegeta's strategy, um, in a minute later on in the chapter. So they go into space or the stratosphere. They're still technically in the atmosphere, I guess. And they go into Super Saiyan Blue and start attacking Moro's illusions, which was really awesome. And Moro's pretty smart here. Like, you know, they can't underestimate him that yet they, they seem to keep underestimating him. <laughs> so he has all these illusions making them think that he's here, but they he like the illusion disappears when they try to hit him. And it turns out that he's like on this floating rock back in the distance and he's too far out for Goku and Vegeta another smart move on Moro's part because they can't go that far into space because then there is no air as opposed to very little air you know if we remember from Battle of Gods it seems like they were pretty far out into space but I guess there was enough air to survive uh, but here I guess there's not it, it almost seems like a lot of the times in this series that they can survive in space when it's convenient or cool for the plot but uh, they can't do it when it's convenient for the plot. So Dakaioshin goes in alone against Moro, but Moro has absorbed a bunch of energy and now he's the top dog. And I'm really enjoying this aspect of this arc, the one-upsmanship. It really brings back to classic Dragon Ball where you're fighting an opponent and you bring out this technique and it gets the, the one up on them, but then they have like a counter. See, Moro was, uh, I mean, Vegeta was kind of on top in the beginning of their fight. And and then Moro was on top, revealing like his secret energy stealing stuff. And then Boo comes in, he's on top, and now Moro makes his wish and absorbs more energy, and now he's on top. I'm loving that, man. Uh, it really brings out the stakes in this uh, arc. So Daikaushin is fighting him, and he's not really doing very well against Moro. I mean, because Moro's just a lot stronger, and he's struggling a lot. And then we get an actual name for the technique, the Kai Kai Matoru, uh, which is interesting. Maris seems to know a lot. He is really educated. Like, is there an encyclopedia of Kai's that Maris just read up on? <laughs> um, but apparently he doesn't have enough power to do the technique against Moro when he goes to do it, he's kind of bluffing, and I, I initially I was thinking that, okay, he can't do it again because initially when he did it, it took away a lot of his god power, and that's kind of bringing it full circle to that, but it's not because of that, it's because Kid Boo <laughs> took like the majority of, or a bunch of god power when uh, Fat Boo was taken out of him, which I thought didn't really make much sense because uh, Fat Boo was sealed inside uh, Super Boo and Daikaushin is sealed inside Fat Boo, so it's like multi-layered, but apparently his power was still going through and when Fat Boo was taken out of Super Boo to create Kid Boo, um, apparently his power kind of stuck. Uh, I, I don't know, it, does that make sense to you guys? 
because I'm not sure if that makes sense to me quite yet. If his whole self was taken out, then shouldn't his power be taken out too? Why would his power stay? You know what I'm saying? So still got to make up my mind about that, I guess. But I really enjoyed the art during this fight as well because it just showed like the, the choreography and the camera angles, the paneling and everything really kind of came together to create a cohesive uh, visual storytelling moment. And it's really showing that, geez, Daikaio is just in over his head here. And then he goes in to try to do his technique, but then he calls the bluff and he can't do it. And then Maris kind of changes his mind about leaving the scene and he decides to go in. <laughs> and oh my God, like every, like this chapter or this arc never fails to show like this guy's skill it's just he's just like the over the top skilled dude in any media like he is kind of an underdog in that he's just in the galactic patrol he's not like a god level fighter or anything like that but he's so freaking super skilled and even with his little pea shooter he still gets one up on moro because you know he's a strategic fighter as well so he's shooting at Moro with his little pea shooter and Moro's like what is that little thing gonna do and I'm like well a laser beam did almost kill Goku in the Resurrection F saga so the little pea shooter can do quite a bit given the right circumstances um so Goku and Vegeta are like okay oh man well we don't have this trump card of this you know magic sealing technique anymore it brute force it is and I'm like no no, please don't go that direction. This is an enemy where you can't just use brute force. We have been shown that you guys are dumb. And if it comes to that, if brute force wins out over like strategy or uh, any kind of like battle planning, then I, th it's kind of kind of fall apart for me a little bit. And I really hope that it doesn't come to that. I really hope that there's at least some strategy involved. But that reminds me of Daikaioshin's kind of flashback to the Boo Saga. We see Moro pound him down and it cuts to him rebounding from that. And he's getting a flashback of the Kid Boo fight versus the Spirit Bomb. And this is kind of serving two purposes. Showing that Daikaioshin was conscious during that scene through the eyes of uh, Fat Boo during those moments. And it's also showing that uh, foreshadowing that we may need the spirit bomb to defeat Moro, which may tie into a strategic thing in beating Moro, as opposed to a brute force power, which beats Moro, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I thought that was a really cool moment. And I thought that it was a nice kind of pause from the action to make all the action even more fresh. But going back to the Maris fights, man, this guy's skill. <laughs> I mean, he uses a pea shooter to kind of crack the mountain during the, the whole shooting. And I'm like, okay, he's not just shooting him to try to beat him. He's got some sort of strategy because that's what Maris does. He uses strategy and skill to get one up on like people who are stronger than him. So he did. He uses the mountain to get one up on Moro and then blast him right in the freaking face with his jet boots oh my god which shouldn't really do anything to him but if anything it gave him a nice trim on his beard <laughs> like you know skip the trip to the barbershop just have Maris blast you in the face with his jet boots <laughs> so that was awesome of course it didn't do anything which still gave us a satisfying moment um, especially when Daikaioshin teleports in and teleports Moro back to Namek so that Goku and Vegeta can fight him. Now that strategy, quote unquote, does not make sense to me because we've seen what happens when these guys go face to face with him. Maybe their strategy is to finish him off like real quick before he can really absorb too much of their power. Um, <laughs> man, I, God, man, this is just an, such an open book because I don't think that Goku and Vegeta just fighting Moro head on is a good strategy and I don't think it's gonna work and I hope it doesn't work because that's a stupid strategy and I'm really hoping that other characters can get involved I'm waiting for when Hercule comes in Mr. Satan the hero of the universe who defeated Cell is gonna come in and save the universe once and for all from Moro because Hercule doesn't have any energy for Moro to steal <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness 
um, the Daikaioshin's mentioning and, and actually teleporting kind of raised in my mind, okay, so I guess this Kai can teleport. Um, remind me if I'm wrong here, did the Supreme Kai ever teleport? Because originally it was Kibito that was using the instant transmission or the Kai's instant transmission and Supreme Kai could never do it. So I don't remember if he could ever. Remind me if I'm if I'm uh, missing something. But at any rate, this uh, chapter was quite entertaining, and I think it was very effective in visually telling us what was going on, and we didn't have to cut to ob random observers every two seconds explaining what was happening right after we saw what was happening, which was all of the Tournament of Power, both in the anime and the manga. So I very much appreciated that, and I think it was a very well done chapter. Uh, uh, what did you guys think of the chapter? We leave it off with a cliffhanger still. What did Moro wish for? Now this is kind of implying that my theory is incorrect, that Moro wished for immunity to Supreme Kai's magic sealing technique. So, man, what, what did he wish for in that instance? Because it's hard to know what he would want. I mean, it doesn't seem like he would want immortality since he already has the ability to live millions and millions of years uh, without dying. And they've already explained that they can't destroy him for one reason or another. And that's why they had to seal his magic away. So, hmm, the theory is still out there. What do you guys think? Obviously, I love uh, reading what you think in the comments below. And I read all your comments. Uh, I enjoy it a lot. So, you know, give me your thoughts. Uh, drop your thought waves down in the comments below. As always, I very much appreciate your support on the channel and uh, watching the videos. I hope you enjoy them. Uh, as much as I enjoy talking about this stuff. So thanks a lot for watching and take it easy.